When we call the sea, the teddy bear are here to play. If you don't come play with us, then we will kill you. <laughs> Today we cross 666 subscribers. In honour of this momentous occasion, I've released this special episode with the most twisted and evil iconography available. All hate and rage on this channel, sometimes we can actually praise Games Workshop for... Um... Uh... No, no, there, there have been good things, right? Of course there have. And I think we don't talk enough at times about it. People are always in the comments talking about how we just hate on the company and how we shouldn't because they're going in a new direction. And today, our 666 uh, subscriber episode, I actually want to focus on the positives and a few ideas I have going forwards that I personally would like to see. Now, I'd like to say, for the record, I think that they're doing a much, much better job with Kevin Roundtree, old Big Kev in charge. They've brought back old games, re-engaged with the community and much more. The faults that still exist don't lie at that end. The faults that we so vehemently go on about are in the game design area. The sculpts that are very hit and miss and no sense of continuity within factions at times. Big Kev, he deserves props for relaunching specialist games. He also deserves props for trying to undo the damage that Kirby caused in his reign. Despite how I may personally feel about their criminal pricing structure, he's trying to do his best by the shareholders and to look after the fans as well at the same time. That's not always possible, but I do recognise he's trying. There's a long way to go, but they've taken their first steps back towards being a company for the fans. In keeping with the positive content today, I want to bring up the Warhammer Community Portal. This page is actually really good with previews of upcoming miniatures, a few blurbs and columns by the writers at Black Library and the design studio staff, as well as tutorials. Sure, I personally don't give a fuck about thin your paints, but the man has a point. And even if it's not the mantra I need to live by, for a few hobbyists, especially some of the Games Workshop dwellers, he can actually provide some real great tutorials and pointers. Duncan's doing this for free, right? Games Workshop themselves are doing this for free. They don't have to give you a thing in this area. It's really good stuff. I do feel inclined to point out here, though, they need to engage with the community as it's in their own best interest to do so. More than just hosting competitions, they need to do promotions, giveaways, and not just the kind where you buy hundreds of dollars worth of products uh, just for a chance to win a single prize and you're up against the whole rest of the world. I'm talking skulls. I'm talking promotional tours. A group of Games Workshop representatives going around from store to store on tour, showing off products, demoing painting, demoing how to work with Forge World resins, things like that. That's not that hard, and I think if they did it, it would. I honestly would have pretty much nothing left to complain about when it comes to their community engagement. And overall, their community engagement is actually becoming fantastic. Actually, I tell a small lie here. There's one other thing that does have to change. Billy, the coked-up intern, he needs to go. Now, this is an actual person we're talking about here, of course. Billy, the coked-up intern, is fictional. But a big problem that there is is often Games Workshop will give out two answers to the same question. My advice here is just write down the stupid email questions that pop up repeatedly, such as, do segment terminators get to choose their powers? Or, does Perturabo's Tormentor have upgrade options? And once you've written them down, give the question an answer. And next time a different person calls up and asks that same question, bingo, you'll have your answer there waiting for them. Not only that, put up the list as a PDF the way Games Workshop used to do 15 years back with FAQ and Errata in White Dwarf. This isn't a negative thing at all. I'm just saying it's a suggestion from me to them what could be slightly improved. Now, big positive thing boxed games. They're still knocking it out of the park here. However, the inclusion of kits from the 90s, um, 
in the Shadows War Armageddon, a little bit on the nose for my tastes. Kelth and Prospero, on the other hand, fantastic value for money, and a great introduction into the Horus Heresy, as the miniatures translate really well into nearly every legion. All that's lacking here is a box that includes Militia for 31st Millennium or some Mechanicus. I think Thalax would be an auto-include here, in my opinion. Again, not negative, just some ideas I think need to be pushed going forward. Blood Bowl is about perfect. What more can I say? I have most of what has been released and I can't wait for more. They're even bringing back Made to Order starting this weekend, just for Blood Bowl. However, it will likely hit the hip pockets, so, you know, you probably won't be able to fill out all your dream teams. Warhammer Quest Silver Tower, um, it's unique. Um, however, the rest of the box games at this point in time, they don't need much more mention because they're not doing anything super special. They're just fun standalone games and they occasionally have interesting characters thrown into them. Last of all, the plotline moving forward and the new fluff. In the spirit of positivity, I'll say this much. One person just today said Flesh Eater Courts was really well done. Other people really like the idea of the Eldar God of the Dead. So these ideas can't be all bad. They're doing what people are like, um, referring to plot points, things like that. They just need to tweak their writing style. I think we can all agree. I mean, I'm still being positive if I suggest taking a few writers out back and capping them, right? No. My lawyer is shaking his head at me and mouthing no for some reason. I don't know what that means. So yes, positives. There are many. We do see them, we do recognise them, but nobody should fool themselves into thinking there isn't a lot to still be done. As a community, you need to treat Games Workshop like any entertainment medium. If you go and see a movie and it's bad, you rate it accordingly. Nobody in their right mind is giving Ghostbusters 2016 five fucking stars. And you shouldn't do the same thing with Games Workshop. Praise the good, shit on the bad. But when you do, always try and say what you would have preferred or what you think could have been done better. Because if they listen to you just one time, you may change this hobby for the better. Thanks everyone for watching our 666 subscriber special episode, and we'll see you all next time.